Chapter 3 The Shooting Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please, one for you and me, and one for the children. Ducks it shall be, said Mr. Fox, Bunce is best. Now, do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. Oh, my darling, said Mr. Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell one from the other. Bogus gives off a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Bunce reeks of goose livers, and as for me, the fumes of apple cider hang around him like a poisonous gas. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Mrs. Fox. You know they'll be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't worry about me, said Mr. Fox. I'll see you later. But Mr. Fox would not have been quite so cocky had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside the entrance to the hole, each of them crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And what is more, they had chosen their positions very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from them towards the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr. Fox crept up the dark tunnel to the mouth of his hole. He poked out his long, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed once. He moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. <sniffs> he was always especially careful when coming out from his hole. He inched forward a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. <laughs> he found none. And he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he heard, or thought he heard, a tiny noise. A soft rustling sound as if though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr. Fox flattened his body against the ground and lay very still. His ears pricked. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. Must have been a field mouse, he told himself. Oh, some other small animal. He crept a little further out of his hole. Then, further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took a last careful look around. The wood was murky and very still. Somewhere in the sky, the moon was shining. Just then, his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind the trees not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface. Mr. Fuchs lay still watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens, it was a barrel of a gun. Quick as a whip, Mr. Fox jumped back into his hole. And at the same instant, the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang. The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air. Bogus and Bunce and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole. And there, on the ground, in the circle of light, half in and half out of the hole, lay the Poor, tattered, blood-stained remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. We got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Bang a blast, said Bogus. We shot too late. We should have let fly the moment he poked his head out. He won't be poking his head out again in a hurry, Bunce said. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. Then he said, It will take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. 
I'm not sitting around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ha <laughs> ha, said Bogus. Now you make the talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down there. That hole, said Bunt said. Then we'll have the lot. Get the shovels. Chapter 4. The Terrible Shovels Down the hole, Mrs Fox was tenderly licking the stump of Mr Fox's tail to stop the bleeding. It was the finest tail for miles around, she said in between licks. It hurts, said Mr Fox. I know it does, sweetheart, but it'll soon get better. And it'll soon grow again, Dad, said one of the small foxes. It will be able to grow again, said Mr. Fox. I shall be tailless for the rest of my life. He looked very glum. There was no food for the foxes that night, and soon the children dozed off. Then Mrs. Fox dozed off, but Mr. Fox couldn't sleep because of the pain in the stump of his tail. Well, he thought. I suppose I'm lucky to be alive at all. And now they've found our hole, we're going to have to move out as soon as possible. We'll never get any peace if we... What was that? He turned his head sharply and listened. The noise he heard was the most frightening noise a fox can ever hear. The scrape, scrape, scraping of shovels digging into the soil. Wake up! He shouted. They're digging us out! Mrs. Fox was wide awake in a second. She sat up, quivering all over. Are you sure that's what it is? She whispered. I'm positive. Listen. They'll kill my children, cried Mrs. Fox. Never, said Mr. Fox. But darling, they will, sobbed Mrs. Fox. You know they will. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch went the shovels above their heads. Small stones and bits of earth began falling from the roof of the tunnel. How will they kill us, Mummy? asked one of the small foxes. His round black eyes were huge with fright. Will there be dogs? he said. Mrs. Fox began to cry. She gathered her four children close to her and held them tight. Suddenly, there was an especially loud crunch above their heads, and the sharp end of a shovel came right through the ceiling. The sight of this awful thing seemed to have an electric effect upon Mr. Fox. He jumped up and shouted, I've got it! Come on! There's not a moment to lose. Why didn't I think of this before? Think of what, Dad? A fox can dig quicker than a man, shouted Mr. Fox, beginning to dig. Nobody in the world can dig as quick as a fox. The soil began to fly out furiously behind Mr. Fox. As he started to dig for dear life, with his front feet, Mrs. Fox ran toward, ran forward to help him. So did the four children. Go downwards, ordered Mr. Fox. We've got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can. The tunnel began to grow longer and longer. It sloped steeply downward, deeper and deeper, below the surface of the ground it went. The mother and the father and all four of the children were digging together. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them. And gradually the scrunching and scraping of the shovels became fainter and fainter. After about an hour, Mr. Fox stopped digging. Hold it, he said. They all stopped. They turned and looked back up the long tunnel they had just dug. All was quiet. Phew! said Mr. Fox. I think we've done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done, everyone. They all sat down, panting for breath, and Mrs. Fox said to her children, I should like you to know that if it wasn't for your father, we should all be dead by now. Your father is a fantastic fox. Mr. Fox looked at his wife and smiled. He loved her more than ever when she said things like that. Chapter 5. The Terrible Tractors 
As the sun rose the next morning, Boggus and Bunce and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house in it. But they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Boggus. Whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Bunce. Boggus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily. I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I've strung him up over my front porch dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure said the fat boggus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, Have you got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. He never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and ugh, stuff like that. This made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce, and Bunce shouted back, Got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines, mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. That was a pretty good idea, and the other two had to admit it. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Boggus, you stay here and see if the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I... We'll go and fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him, quick. The long, thin bean walked away. The tiny bunce trotted after him. The fat boggus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon, two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels at the front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one, Bunce, the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal looking monsters. Here we go then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr. Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were sent flying and trees were falling. The noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr. Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs. Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes. Our tunnel's getting shorter. I can see daylight. They all looked around, and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now. The circle of daylight beyond they could see the huge, huge black tractors almost on top of them. <gasps> tractors! shouted Mr. Fox. And mechanical shovels. Dig for your life. Dig, dig, dig!